All right, welcome. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I added this uh, title screen and also how I added a, the transition screen as we load up the level. So first of all, let's just do a quick demo. Uh, I can select my character here uh, and I'm going to select Luigi just to test it out. Here's the transition screen and then the level begins. So here I'm going to show you how I did that. And I've also got a transition screen if we die uh, and that loads me back to the beginning of the level. So let's start by seeing how I uh, did this title screen. And the first point I'm gonna make is that actually how I did this title screen is a little bit of a hack. And that's because this title screen is actually the first level. And if you remember the original title screen, if you waited just a little bit of time, then Mario would start running and he would do a couple jumps and so on. I haven't actually scripted that action in there, but what I chose to do is actually load up the first level, but then basically freeze my controls so Mario will not move and will move instead according to some script. Again, some script I have not yet implemented. So to implement this, instead of actually creating a new title screen object, which is something that I might do, or maybe collection of objects, a, a title screen scene that I would load, uh, I have instead just let the scene manager take over the title screen's uh, control. And this would be something I would do when I have a very simple title screen, like in, in Mario, where I'm really just selecting a character. Um, if it was a more complicated one with an actual interactive menu, you should, you should probably pop it out and make a menu object. Now, the other reason why I've chosen to, to embed it in my scene manager, as you may have already noticed in my last couple of videos, scene manager's doing a couple of different jobs for me. Uh, but one of the reasons why uh, I believe it belongs in the scene manager here is this is basically what the scene manager's job is, is to switch from scene to scene. And this is the first scene, the title scene, that I'm going to move into now the first level. So to take care of this, the two basically phases that the scene manager can be in, whether it's on the title screen or not, just managing the scenes during the regular gameplay, I've added this flag here, which is just going to tell me if I'm on the title screen or not. And I'm going to have it set initially to true since I want the game to start up to be in the title screen. In addition, because I'm going to want to load the title screen again, say if the game was over, if we uh, uh, lost all our lives and want to start up again from the beginning, I've actually added that in. It's also an argument into my load level um, function, and that's because uh, I'm going to need to know if I want to load the level up with the title screen on it or it without. And so I've added that extra little bit in here, and that's what I'm going to be setting that flag. Otherwise, I'll be setting it to false by calling this load level with false in the title position, in which case I will overwrite the true title. But the first time through, I have this set to true, so it will load up the title screen. Now on the title screen, I'm going to still want to draw most of the HUD because the HUD actually appears in the title screen. So this draw logic that I have that draws the HUD at the top of the screen, I'm just going to leave that alone, but I'm going to embed some more logic here inside the if this dot title. And this logic will just draw the title logo. That's what this draw image call does here. And then it just gives it sets up my menu uh, with just a little bit of logic here. My fill style is going to be test to see if my mouse is actually hovering in between. And here I've made it just an X or sorry, a Y coordinate here uh, vertically. If I'm anywhere in that vertical chunk with the word Mario, uh, I will assume I'm clicking on Mario and uh, likewise for Luigi. I've also got the logic for if a click occurs, then I'm going to check the click within that same range. If it's within the same range, then I will know I've clicked on Mario or Luigi. And the only difference between these blocks of code here is that when I uh, create Mario, uh, I will pass them in with true in the Luigi uh, in the in the Luigi flag that will uh, make sure Mario uses the Luigi color scheme instead of the Mario color scheme. The other thing you'll notice here is I call load level and I've actually just left out the uh, other flag which is going to be set to false or in this case null which is falsy and I will have this flag true. This is not the title screen flag. This flag here is going to tell us that we want to load the transition screen before we load the level. Now usually we do that, we'll load the transition screen before we lo load the level if this is the first time that we're going to be on the level or if we just died on the level and we got uh, reloaded again. The reason is the, the transition screen will tell us how many lives we have left. So now I want to show you how I did the transition screen. 
And so I just created a simple object that is my transition screen. And, and instead of creating a whole bunch of entities for each part of the transition screen, I just have one entity that keeps track of the whole uh, transition screen. And there's really nothing to it in its update logic. I just use an elapsed time counter and I update it, update it every tick. And then once I've spent two seconds, I just load the level. But this time I put false into my uh, into the transition flag. That way I won't load this transition screen again. Instead, I will just actually load the level. This is important because I've actually changed my load level. You can see here I have these, I've changed it so it will accept these two flags, the transition flag and the title flag, which will tell me should I load the level with the title screen on and should I load the level with the transition uh, screen in between. And I've just added this one extra check here. If transition is true, then I'm going to add the transition screen instead of the level. So I'll just load the transition screen in there. And I'm actually just passing through most of the same uh, information here because this information, level, X, Y, this is important for me when I actually load the level. It's not important for me when I load the transition screen. The transition screen doesn't care about it, but it's going to pass this information on when it does load the level. So it's so what's actually happening here is load levels getting called. It goes in, it notices that transitions on and it says, oh, it's not actually time to load the level yet. So instead I will load the transition screen, knowing that the transition screen will call load level again in two seconds and it will flick, flip this transition or toggle it to false so that the next time we come in, it will hit here and say, oh, this is my, my logic that I had in my previous video that actually just loads the, le the level in. The only other thing I have in my transition screen is the logic to draw it. And so uh, the transition screen is, is black and my background is actually light blue for the sky. So the first thing I need to do is draw the big black uh, rectangle in the back. And then I just draw some text as I would normally. Uh, I just cut and paste the HUD text because most of this is still put, uh, painted at the top of the screen. And then I have uh, just a little bit of test here. Uh, it's possible that the game is over. If the game is over, then uh, I print game over. Otherwise, I just say what world we're on and how many lives you have left uh, and draw your image that is the Mario or the uh, Luigi image. The last thing that I'll mention is a subtlety here that arises due to the asynchronous nature uh, of the game. And that's has to do with how I clear the entities out whenever I want to load in a new level. Now, um, often, and in an earlier version of this code, I'm used to doing stuff like this. This first line here, line 25, this just it would nullify the entity list by just making it empty. So basically dumping everything out of it by just overwriting it with an empty list. Now I'll do this a lot of time because it's easier to type usually, it's easier to sort of think of, and then um, it just quickly clears out the entities. Now the problem with this is you don't usually want to be just deleting entities out of a list willy-nilly. Uh, there are sort of safe times when you can do it, and then there are problematic bad times when you can do it. Now most of the times when I've been doing this in the past, I've been doing this in the safe times, but as a result of some of the changes I wanted to add in here, uh, it, I wanted to do this operation in some of the dangerous times, which was causing error. So I'll just mention what that error is. So um, let's take a look back at our game engine and recall that what the game engine does, at least one of the things it does is it calls this update method, which allows every entity in the system to update. Now, if one of these entities along the way happens to call, say, let's say load level, or in this case, clear entities, which I had with my new function, and it just deleted out all the other entities, it's possible that we were in the middle of this loop. We hit this update, we we're not on the, on the last one. If we're on the last one, we're safe. But if we're not on the last one, what will happen is when I come back in here and I try this loop again, the entity I get on my next loop, the next iteration of the loop, will not exist anymore because I've just deleted it out. If you've ever tried to delete something out of a list while you're iterating over the list, you've probably got this bug before, which is when you get to the end of the list, it's, it's shorter than you expect it to be because you've taken entities out of it. In this case, I've taken all the entities out of it. So the very next, uh, next entity I would check will give me an error actually on this line here, 129. So I had to decide to myself, well, what could I do to do this? I had to decide, do I give up 
the sort of easy, quick, hacky way of just deleting all the entities at once? Uh, or do I make sure that this never gets called from this point? And I, and I sort of went back and forth thinking about this. Now, I'll mention a couple changes I made or the reason why it worked before, okay? The reason it worked before is the only entity that would make changes to the entity list or the most common entity to make changes to the entity list is the scene manager or here it's called the camera. And so you'll notice I, a couple uh, iterations ago, I decided to break out the camera and make it its own entity separate from the other entity list. So the camera is not in the entity list and it does not get called as one of these updates. It always gets called last. And that's because I wanted to make sure it always got called last. You'll see up above here, I also always draw it last for the same reason. In this case, I wanted to make sure it's on top, but I always wanted to update last so it has a chance for Mario to move first before the camera checks to see where the where the camera should move to as well. Now, the only other entity that would create, or sorry, the only other entity that would remove entities from this entity list would be Mario himself when Mario makes an update. Now, usually if Mario squishes a Goomba or something else like that, eats a coin or something like that, he just sets the remove from world flag. He doesn't go and try and delete the entities itself because that's not safe. That would cause an error in this line. Instead, he sets the remove from world flag to be true and then it gets spliced out down below here safely. You'll notice this list goes or this for loop goes backwards instead of forwards to be safe in the splicing out of entities that should be removed. But the only other entity that actually removed entities from the game was Mario. And he would sometimes do that if Mario called the load level function from the, the scene manager or the camera. If Mario decided to load the level, which he does maybe when he transitions to a bonus level, or in some cases Mario knows that Mario dies, it, we could at least imagine Mario calling the function of the scene manager saying, hey, I've died, you should load the next level or lo reload the level. Uh, but what I've tried to do is um, make sure the camera makes most of those calls because I ran into a problem here and I'll tell you exactly what error I was getting here is I would hit this line. Mario was usually the last entity in this list, which meant it was safe for him to remove the other entities, even safe for him to remove himself from the list because there would be no next iteration where I would get an error. And because of that, it was safe up until this point for Mario to load new levels. However, I got into a problem now when I added the transition screen, because what's going to happen in the transition screen is Mario is going to know that he wants to load the next level, but instead of loading all the entities of the next level, he will load the transition screen. And then the transition screen will load the next level. Well, unfortunately, what that happened is because Mario loads the transition screen in, he's no longer the last entity in my loop. And then when I try and delete everything out, I got an error. He tries to get to the next entity in the loop and that entity no longer exists. As a result, I was getting a, a, a error. Uh, there was a, you know, entity was undefined on this line. And so I decided, okay, I can't do that. And the reason I was getting into that problem again was because I was just nullifying the entities list by just making it equal to a new empty list. In so doing, just, just rough handedly deleting all of those entries out all in one step. Instead, what I should be doing is using the remove from world flag, which is the safe way to remove the entities from the world. So instead, I'll just show you how I've done that or what that that new change does is in clear entities where I will now call clear entities where I used to nullify out the list clear entities. Again, I could just nullify it in here, but instead I've got this quick little for each loop that's just going to go through each entity and set its remove from world flag to be true, including Mario, including uh, you know anything else in the level. And then after I do that, then I will add in the transition screen. What that means now is when we get to the next chance when we call update here, the next tick, First, we will go through this loop and it will say, oh, all of these entities have the remove from world flag uh, set to be false. So I'm just gonna skip over them. We don't do updates on any of those old entities that need to be removed. But when we get to the transition screen, we do do an update on that because it, it doesn't have its remove from world flag set yet. And then 
we go down into this loop here and all those ones that had the remove from world flag actually get deleted out. So there's going to be actually one tick in the transition where all the entities from the last level are still there and all the entities from the next level are there, but the old entities are going to be deleted out on this tick and the, and the new entities are the only ones that get to, to uh, do what they need to do. Now this is only going to really be important when we're transitioning to levels with no transition uh, screen in between them because this will be a case where we're, we're really deleting out you know a whole bunch maybe a hundred entities from the last level and we're adding in maybe a whole bunch maybe another hundred a hundred entities of the next level but they'll all be in the entity list for one tick while the new ones are getting ready to do their thing or we want the new ones to be there on time uh, ahead of time so they're ready to do their thing when it's their chance to do it and the old ones will get deleted out and so there's no you know, sort of one tick of just pure nothing displayed on the screen uh, where we have actually no entities we wouldn't we don't want that state so to avoid that state we need to have uh, this overlap tick where all the entities sort of overlap in so that was the last little little more subtle thing that I did was I added this new clear entities this is a safer way to clear the entities out by setting all their remove from world flags to be true and actually this introduced one error for me and this introduced one error and it introduced the error because I here what I do with my Mario is of all my entities the scene manager and Mario persist over each level and that's important because if Mario has you know firepower and he leaves level one and gets to level two we want him to still have firepower when he gets to the next level and so we need to persist that state so to do that I don't actually renew in, in, the, in the true sense of newing Mario every time I keep my Mario as a reference and I just change the important properties of Mario like his XY and in this case I set his remove from world back to false because in that loop I had just set it to true he got deleted but now I want when I add him back in if I leave his remove from world flag as false he'll immediately get deleted out again which is what, what I don't want to happen so I set it back to false I also reset his velocity uh, to zero and then I actually didn't have this last little check here I was just adding Mario back in and this worked fine because normally when I load a level the last thing I want to do is load Mario in so he's the last entity but when I did not have the transition screen in between there was still that Mario from the last level in there okay so now we're talking about when I transition into the tube and go to the bonus level for instance when I do that I don't there's not going to be a transition screen in between I just immediately go to the next level and as a result we have that overlap phase that one tick where all the entities from the original first level are there and then all the entities from the bonus level are there and that includes actually two copies of Mario and that's where my new bug came in now I have two copies of Mario and in fact they are two copies of Mario but they're shallow copies they're the same Mario Mario ended up being in my list twice and as a result when I say this, when I say, hey, Mary, Mario, change your remove from world flag to false, that changes it on both of them. And so now when I go through and try and delete, I delete all the things from the first level, but not Mario. Now, normally you might think, well, this is weird. What's going to happen? Well, the only thing that happens, it's the same Mario. So he's in there twice, but it's the same Mario which means he just gets two updates and two draws. It doesn't matter if he draws himself twice, but he gets two updates, which mean it meant all of a sudden he was twice as fast. And then when I came out of the tube and I, and I re-emerged on first level, now he was three times as fast because there's three instances of him. And so I, I thought to myself, how do I do this? How do I deal with this? And again, I, you know, I went through a couple of different um, uh, solutions and I tried to find one that I thought was the most software engineering elegant of them. And this was it. It's not super elegant. But it was just to check, hey, Mario, if you're already there, don't add him in. And if he isn't there, then I will add him in. Uh, I thought this was a little bit more elegant than just adding a third flag to my already flag-heavy uh, method here. Uh, that, you know, another flag that just says yes or no, whether I should add Mario in or not. Uh, and instead, I thought, I'll just check. Now, the flag, while, you know, gives me a little bit of pain from the software engineering side, uh, is actually the more efficient way of doing things. Uh, because searching through the list to see if Mario is in there is obviously going to take a little bit of time. 
However, this was the, the solution that I opted for. All right, that's how I added the title screen and those transition screens to my Super Mario Brothers. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.